Yo, what's up? Avian here. Today was a really crazy week in college football. I cannot wait to share all my thoughts with you guys in a second. And then next week's games are even crazier. We're going to talk about all of that in my new top 25. I had a little shakeup in the top 10 and the back end. I'm going to show you guys and explain my thought process behind it all. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, here's my top 25 rankings for week six. I have Ohio State number one. They just looked really good in their game against Michigan State. I know Michigan State's not that good. This is Ohio State's first road game. And technically, their defense only gave up six points in this game. CJ Stroud threw a pick six, and then Michigan State had a touchdown in garbage time against like the fourth fifth stringers for Ohio State in the fourth quarter. But after less than three quarters, Ohio State already had 49 points, and I just think they're the best team in the country. CJ Stroud had six passing touchdowns. Trayvon Henderson had a lot of yards rushing, and it's really looking like they're the most complete team right now. Also, I'm gonna preference this. This top 25 is based off of my week five rankings, not the AP. So if you're looking at the AP poll and comparing it to mine, it's not gonna make sense. You have to watch my last video. Just wanted to clear that up. After Ohio State, I have Georgia in the number two spot. They completely obliterated Auburn, 42 to 10, and they finally put together a decent game after riding the struggle bus the last two weeks. And I'm pretty sure they just put Harson out of a job as well. And so running to Georgia at number three I have Alabama moving them down the three from one they played Texas A&M this weekend and they won that game 24 to 20 this was one of the most sloppy games I've seen Alabama play regardless if they have a second string quarterback first string whoever it is I know Milrow never started a game before he turned the ball over three times and they turned it over four times overall and if they didn't turn it over at all they probably would have crushed them and also for everyone that's going to be going crazy in the comment section I do believe if Bryce Young played they would have clapped Texas A&M by at least 30 points. Texas A&M is a really bad team. They have an okay defense and they have no offense. But I have to judge what Alabama put out on the field, especially at home, and they could have lost this game. They probably should have lost this game just like that Texas game. So I have to put them right back down at three. The bright spot for them was definitely Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs was running the ball all over the place. He is a superstar running back. And anyway, him and Bryce Young, they're going to make a lot of noise, especially with Tennessee next week. That's going to be an amazing game. And after them, I have Clemson in the same spot that they were in last week. They ended up beating Boston college pretty easy game for them dj looked okay defense played very well will shipley played pretty good and overall they played solid and i cannot really say the same about michigan they were tied with indiana at halftime i think and indiana just really isn't a good team especially in the big 10 they're very lackluster so the fact that this game was that close is just insane to me and i still think they have to come a long way they have penn state coming up so they have to be on their a game and not be messing around till the last quarter of the game then sitting right behind michigan i have the tennessee volunteers they played lsu at LSU and they won this game 40 to 13. They came in to Death Valley and smacked LSU right in the mouth. Their offense looks really good. Their defense is also playing at a high level. This game against Alabama is going to be their Super Bowl and I really think that they have a good shot of beating Alabama with Bryce Young and all. And then Hooker played pretty well. Small played really well. LSU could not get anything going. They looked like they didn't really know what was going on the entire game. So one thing I did take away from this is Tennessee is definitely the real deal and completely deserving of the sixth spot. Then sitting right behind them at Oklahoma State, they beat Texas Tech 41 to 31. This game was a lot closer than I really thought it would be, and I thought Oklahoma State should have played a little bit better. They did come back and score a little at the end, but overall, I don't think they had the best game of their season at all. That's why I actually moved Tennessee above them and moved them back one to seven. And sitting right behind them, I have USC. USC beat Washington State 30 to 14. That was actually a good win for USC. I just think what Tennessee did and Oklahoma State just winning kept them above USC in a way. If you guys watched my last video, you would understand why I said that. Caleb Williams, Travis Dye, they did their thing. They played well. They actually played well on defense too. The hell, holding um, Washington State to 14 points is actually pretty good because they've been high scoring most of their games this year. And then next, I have a new team entering the top 10. I got UCLA sitting at the number nine spot. Congratulations, UCLA. They beat Utah, which I had as number seven in the country, 42 to 32. And all I have to say is Zach Charbonnet, DTR. They have been taking the football world by storm they're playing out of their minds they've won these last crucial games against ranked teams and they're just looking really good and impressive and they're undefeated and definitely deserving to be in the top 10 at least to me anyway and then coming right behind them i have another team entering the top 10 for the first time is tcu they got their win 38 to 31 over kansas now kansas could have won this game but they had like a fumble on the one yard line and a couple other mistakes but nonetheless tcu did win i had tcu sitting at the 13th spot and i moved them up three because of their win and i actually moved ucl 
UCLA up like four or five after their win. So it's not too crazy. I know the AP had them further back, but I had them further up after last week's wins. And now it gets kind of controversial because to put them in the top 10, I had to move Ole Miss back to number 11, even though they took care of Vanderbilt 52 to 28. But hear me out. They were losing to Vanderbilt 17 to 14 at halftime. And I know that doesn't matter because the second half they went crazy. They scored 21 points in the third quarter. I know, I know, I know. My point is that Ole Miss does not look good. They didn't look good when they beat Kentucky. Overrated Kentucky, by the way. They didn't look good when they beat any other team. And this game, they didn't look really good either. So I think UCLA and TCU are just better than Ole Miss. And I moved Penn State back to, they didn't play, but I moved them back because of them moving forward. And I wanted to keep them behind Ole Miss like I initially had them, which is why they are where they are. And then Oregon, I have sitting behind them, even though they won their game, I had them staying pat at the same spot just because of all that rearrangement. But speaking about Oregon, they won their game against Arizona, 49 to 22. It looked very impressive and all that. Onyx actually didn't pass for any touchdowns, didn't throw any interceptions, and he was pretty accurate in this game. But nonetheless, they beat another crappy team, and they're staying where they are at 13. And after them, I have Mississippi State. Mississippi State absolutely annihilated Arkansas, or overrated Arkansas, this team that Alabama crushed the week before. They beat them 40-17, to 17, which kind of makes that win less impressive for Alabama. Even though Mississippi State is a really good team, especially when it comes to Will Rogers and him passing the ball. He passed for nearly 400 yards, 3 touchdowns with 31 out of 48 completions. And that's why I have Mississippi State in the top 15. And then right behind them, I have Wake Forest. Wake Forest took care of business against Army, absolutely annihilating them. 45-10, to 10, and they're running on my top 15. Now, at 16, I have Kansas State. They barely won against Iowa State. State. They won 10 to 9, pulled that game right out the back door. And I guess I have to give kudos to them for winning this game. It was a very low scoring game. Iowa State has a pretty good defense. Kansas State's offense is kind of up and down, especially with how Martinez plays. But nonetheless, they got the win, and I have them at 16. And then right behind them, I have North Carolina State sitting at that number 17 spot. And North Carolina State, they almost lost against Florida State. They should have lost against Florida State. But the only reason that they won was because Mike Norvell is one of the worst Power 5 coaches and makes completely idiotic decisions the fact that he threw the ball down there when he was running out the clock to kick a field goal to win the game and he allows Jordan Travis to just throw the ball up and it gets intercepted and they lose the game like I don't know how you can make that mistake and he made mistakes too when they beat LSU they shouldn't have beat LSU either so he needs to go they need to bring on Deion Sanders and just get him out and then after NC State this might be a little bit of a shock I have Texas yes four and two Texas sitting at the 18th spot after they completely destroyed Oklahoma 49 to 0 Texas's defense played out of their mind. They held Oklahoma to less than 200 yards. I know they don't have Dylan Gabriel, and I know that they're struggling on defense and on offense, but the fact that they won this game by as much as they did in the Red River rivalry game, it's just, it's a rivalry game. You never know what can happen. And Oklahoma laid an egg the first time that they have scored zero points in 311 games. And Quinn Ewers just played amazing. He had four touchdowns and 300 yards passing with one pick. But like I said, with the Longhorns having Quinn Ewers back and them hitting on all cylinders, they would have beaten Alabama. So it doesn't shock me that they beat Oklahoma. I actually picked Texas to beat Oklahoma anyway. I just didn't know that they would do it on this type of fashion. Oklahoma needs to figure something out. Brent Venables needs to figure out what is wrong with this defense and just try to find answers because without Dylan Gabriel, they're going to keep losing games. They might lose six games this year or seven. Then after Texas at the 19th spot, I have Cincinnati. They almost lost to South Florida, actually. I didn't really want to move them up, but it's just how everything works out and who loses and wins. So I have them sitting at 19th spot behind them. I have Syracuse sitting at the 20th spot, rounding out the top 20. They didn't play this week, so I just moved them up like I did with Cincinnati. And after them, I have Utah. Utah, like I said, lost to UCLA, 42 to 32. They did not look good in this game. Cam Rising didn't play well. They didn't run the ball well. They really didn't do much well. They did have a lot of yard, but they could not make the plays that they needed to to win. And they kind of just let UCLA run all over them. They let DTR and Charbonnet just do whatever they want on offense. And you can't do that if you're expecting to compete. Like I said, I had them as the number eight team in the country and I moved them back to 21. And right behind them, I have Kentucky. Kentucky lost against South Carolina, a terrible South Carolina team led by Spencer Rattler, 24 to 14. 
But to Kentucky's like defense, Will Levis was out in this game, their starting quarterback. So I don't really fault them too much, which is why I didn't take them out of the top 25, even though I thought they were very overrated. I do think they would have beaten South Carolina if Will Levis played in this game. So that's why I do have them at the 22 spot and I didn't move them to like 25 or out of the top 25. And then sitting right behind them, I have Kansas. Kansas lost a really close game to TCU, a game they probably should have won, which is kind of why I didn't take them out of the top 25. I just moved them back four spots because they could have won this game. And they played relatively well, even though Jalen didn't have his best game and he was having some issues. Bean came in and he threw like three or four touchdowns and he looked really solid. And I really think Kansas is on the upkeep. I'm keeping them in the rankings. I hope the best for the Jayhawks. And routing out my top 25, they're the two teams that played each other. I have Notre Dame sitting at 24 because they actually beat BYU 28 to 20. And I honestly didn't really want to rank Notre Dame, but I also didn't want to take BYU out of the top 25 because I did have them at the 19th spot and they only lost by eight on the road to a pretty good Notre Dame team especially a good defensive Notre Dame team and they almost came back in the end they were losing this game like 25 to 6 and they almost completed the comeback but I gotta give Notre Dame their props I do have them at 24 and then I have BYU at 25 rounding out my top 25 and one last reason that I have them in the top 25 is because the people on the outside looking in just aren't good enough to put in like Florida State they lost. Washington State, they lost. And just scenarios like that. I know I have James Madison sitting out there, but they have to play at least a couple more games before I rank them because their competition is like nothing. But they've been doing pretty well since they moved from the FCS to the FBS. But that has been the video, guys. This is my top 25. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video if you actually enjoyed and support my Patreon in the description. It really helps me out, especially making more videos. I have another video coming out Monday or Tuesday. I'm going to start a whole new series talking about scenarios of what ifs like what if Texas A&M beat Alabama, what if Texas beat Alabama, what if Kent State beat Georgia, what if Missouri beat Georgia, and the outcomes of that, and where I would have the teams if that were to happen. So let me know if you guys like that idea, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.